I, I personally found the speech very intriguing. I think it is a very uh, controversial speech, and it is extremely well written uh, from a rhetoric standpoint. And uh, it is also uh, it is controversial since uh, since the, the the head of state of a country that is at war uh, receives a Nobel Prize and that uh, for peace and defends the the necessity of war within the context of the Peace Nobel Prize. That was just something that I personally found interesting. And uh, maybe Marta can say something about how she, how the idea came or. Yeah, <clears throat> um, the fact that it's Obama, there was an inspiration of an uh, artwork of Gandhi using, um, it was a sculpture, I saw a sculpture of uh, Gandhi using a MacBook instead of a waver, he used to, to with wool, no? wave, it was a symbol for him, and some artists did that, so he changed the, the figure and he put it nowadays, and then I, I was thinking about universal figures and then, well, there are not endless choices that you can present a figure that many people know or they know what this person stands for. So then the idea of, of the Obama, of, of Obama came because of the Nobel Prize and then I was looking for a, for a figure that could be universal enough that we can work with the body language and the text language and still you audience knows how to contextualize because they know who Barack Obama is. So it was a bit, it could have been Putin, but in this case the text of Obama was really good. <laughs> um, I think there is not a single message. The, um, the performance reveals many, many messages and it's up to the audience to decide which one they find important. For sure we play with the power of rhetorics. Like we analyze rhetorics and we play with them and and we we show one aspect of of manipulation that you can so we show some mechanisms but we don't deliver one single message. Mm. For me, it's also a lot about the uh, body language. The piece uh, is is a lot about how the body communicates uh, without a voice and then how this message of the body um, either helps or opposes. Uh, the things that you're actually saying. So uh, there is a lot of in the piece. There is a lot of contrast uh, sometimes between what I say and what what my body says at the same time. And there is an interesting uh, for us an interesting uh, area of negotiation of content. Like what do you focus on? Uh, do you focus on what you hear, or do you focus on what you see? And uh, what happens when those two? Uh, when there is a mismatch between those two. Politicians are, are puppets, as many of us are. Like in the moment you have a public figure, you many decisions are being taken behind. Politicians and many, many public figures. So um, we use a big idea of, of manipulation, with the body especially, because we, we all know that the politicians get the, their speech written and also, also Obama, this we all know, but what, what we do now is we control the body also, which is our contribution, artistic contribution. And hope, sure there is hope, that's why also well, Obama always speaks about hope. So we took his text and there is hope in this text and we also, we are hopeful people too. <laughs> so there is hope, yeah, we, we, don't, we are not pessimist, let's say. <laughs> It's not, it's not fixed specific words with specific gestures. There is a score, structure of gestures with specific topics, but it's not so defined that every word needs to have specific gestures. So it's a, it's a choreography of gestures that starts from a more politician bodies and then it expands, then it goes to different bodies. Bodies that we know from, from the street, bodies that we know from war images, bodies that we know from babies. So then, then the, the options widen. At the beginning, the figure and the gestures go one on one, and slowly, slowly starts 
the options open up? The performance changes quite a bit. Okay. Uh, it, is, it is also very important that there is an interplay that is happening in the moment and that, is, that has a sense of spontaneity about it. So uh, we, we need to... I, I, I am basically copying, I'm reading all the movements that I see out of the corner of my eye uh, given by Marta from behind the audience. So uh, I cannot be prepared so much. Uh, and this is like when somebody, when a politician is reading from a teleprompter and he doesn't know his text and he looks into the camera but he also reads the teleprompter and this is what we do with the, with the movement so there is, there is a lot of room for, for being in the moment and reacting in the moment and it, there is also um, a level of, of influence from the side of the audience as well so we are, we are not uh, sealed off hermetically from our audience, but it is really, it, it really feels each time we do the piece, uh, the moment with the audience is where, where it's happening, so it's... <laughs> yeah, let's say the only really, really fixed thing is the text. The text is always the same. Uh, the movement, there is a good dramaturgy, but we take our freedom. What he should play, or what he, I mean, what we observe is that politicians uh, have to be very good actors. Like this is, is something, uh, I don't know if this started with Ronald Reagan or even earlier, but there is a thing of uh, politicians are behaving more and more like actors. And maybe actors are behaving more and more like politicians, I don't know. But there is something about this that you, you have to be a person who, is, who works well in front of an audience, who communicates uh, who, a sense of trust and belief, and, and who, uh, like an actor, hits their marks and knows their lines. So it is, uh, and then there's of course many other levels to the work of a politician, but it seems that this aspect uh, becomes more and more important. And they should, I think, oh, I cannot talk what politicians should do, but I, I think it wouldn't be bad as uh, some movement coach, because some, some politicians they have like two gestures, and they talk for hours and they just do that. And then if you talk for two hours and you only do that, there is a moment that people will stop listening to you. So I think they should get some, some inspiration so that sometimes do that, or sometimes they do that, or sometimes they do that. <laughs> um, we, we, are, we both studied translation and interpreting. Okay. So uh, Marta studied uh, German and uh, English and Spanish, and I, I had the same languages but in different combinations. Okay. And uh, we met at a translation seminar. In a very boring class we met, and then we fell in love and then we started to work. It, that was 2007. Uh, yeah, we started working in working, We started working in 2007, so yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you. It's okay, Welcome. thank you very much.